bid you stay a while and listen. Today, I thought I would tell you one of my favorite stories from Denmark, actually. It's a very old and classic tale. It is called King Lindworm. Once upon a time, there was this king, a very brave, strong, wise king. He was very much loved by his people. And he was married to his equal in all respects, a beautiful, wise, intelligent, powerful woman, his perfect queen. Everything in the country was at peace and prosperous. The king and queen ruled fairly, and they were loved by their people. There was only one thing that could make their joy complete, and that would be to gain a child. You see, they hadn't gotten pregnant. They didn't have any prince or princess to call their own, somebody to inherit and somebody to pass on the mantle to. This was, of course, a great source of sadness for both the king and queen. And one day, the queen was actually so distraught and so sad that she ran out into the forest as far as she could go. She collapsed under the branches of this big old oak tree. And as she was laying there, crying, a crooked and bent old woman came walking up to her, shuffling along with her tiny little stick. And she went up to her and said, My dear, my young, young dear, why are you under the tree crying? And the queen, she explained that she didn't have a child. Even though they tried and tried again, they, they couldn't conceive. But the old woman, the old crone, she had a solution. My young dear, if you do as exactly as I tell you, you will become pregnant with child in no time. The queen promised that she would do exactly as the old crone told her. And the old crone, she told her what she needed to do. Now the queen ran home and started to prepare. Because she had to rise up before the sun rise the next morning in order to do all the things the crone wanted her to do. So she went to bed early and then rose up during the night before the sun has risen. And she brought along a big bowl of sweet milk. And she went down into the garden, into the northwestern corner. And right before sunrise, she drank a whole bowl of sweet milk in one pulp. Then she put the bowl upside down in the corner of the garden. And as soon as the first rays of sunshine hit the bowl, she took it off. And right before her very eyes, two roses started to grow up from the ground. One rose was as white as freshly fallen snow, the other as red as blood. Now, the queen, she knew that if she ate the white rose, she would gain a daughter. If she ate the red rose, she would gain a son. And of course, she knew that her husband, the king, desperately wanted a son to call his own. 
But she also wanted a little daughter that she can pass on her knowledge to. And she thought for a long, long while. But eventually she decided. She picked the white rose, put it into her mouth, and chewed it and swallowed. And it tasted like nothing else she had ever tasted in her life. The taste was indescribable. It was like that feeling you get when you have your very first kiss. It was like feeling the spring coming after a long, hard winter. It was divine. There's no other word for it. And before she knew it, she managed to pick the other rose too and eat it. She had completely forgotten the warning from the old crone that whatever she did, do not eat both. But it was too tasty. After a few months, it became clear that the queen was finally pregnant, and much rejoicing was to be had in the land. The queen was beside himself with joy, as was the queen, and their, their people celebrated in the streets, and in, the, in their houses, in the taverns, and in the castle. After a few months more, something terrible happened. The king's enemies was gathering. They had gathered a large army and was set to march upon his country, his land, his kingdom. So the king did what any sensible king would do. He gathered his own army and marched to defend the borders of his kingdom. It turned out to be a long and hard campaign. The king's army was bogged down with constant raids and skirmishes. The queen was back at home, running, administrating and running the country in his absence, which he did a fantastic job of. And she, time went and she became more and more pregnant. And eventually she went into labor while the king was away. It was a long and difficult labor. But eventually, she gave birth, not to a daughter, and not to a son. What she did give birth to was long, rippled with muscles and scales and fangs and claws. As soon as it was given birth to, it burrowed down beneath the castle, not to be seen again. The queen was, of course, horrified. She now understood the warning of the old crone. A couple of months more passes, and the king is victorious in his campaign against the attackers, and re he returns home in victory. Now, the ki uh, queen, she knew that she had to tell her husband what had happened. And she hadn't found the words to put on paper. But she knew that she had to be the first one to tell him what happened when he arrived back home. So, when the king returns with his, with his entourage and enters into the courtyard of the castle, the queen is already there to meet him, and before any servants or, or advisors manages to talk to him, she runs up to him and was just about to tell him when suddenly the whole castle started to shake. Dust billowed up from the ground, and up from the ground came the lindworm. And if you don't know what a lindworm is, imagine a dragon. Take away the wings, make the body longer and stronger, 
add a couple of limbs, and that's a limbworm. They are almost always extremely dangerous and thoroughly evil and cruel. The lindworm looked down upon the king and queen and said, Ah, mother, father, you're back. How nice it is to see you. I've given a lot of thought to this, mother and father, but I would like to get married. Now the king, clever as he is, realized immediately that something had gone wrong, and this was the offspring of him and the queen. And he quickly said that, but, oh great beast, who would want to marry one such as you? I don't care, father, because if you don't find me a bride, I will devour your army. I will crush your castle. The king realized he had no choice, and he promised the lindworm that he would find him a bride. The lindworm burrowed beneath the castle again and went out of sight. The king and queen went to work. They started sending out messages and letters all over the world to try and find somebody that could marry their offspring. They were very careful of not mentioning that their offspring was a giant, horrific, scaly monster. But I mean, who could blame them, really? Eventually, though, a king in a faraway land agreed and uh, sent his one of his daughters to marry their offspring, the lindworm. And when she came, the king and queen arranged for a wedding. And they made it so that down through the throne room they put up a big dividing wall, a screen. And on one side the lindworm lay, and on the other side the bride would walk down. Now the king, he would perform the ceremony himself, and as such would be the only one to see them both. Now the wedding went off without a hitch, and the bride was brought up to her wedding chambers when the wedding feast started. And all the visitors and was sitting there feasting with the king and queen, the servants was busy with filling uh, horns and mugs with ale and wine and they were eating and feasting when they suddenly heard an ear-piercing scream sounding from the wedding bedchamber. The sound was so horrific that a chill went down everyone's spine. All the merriment vanished from the feast. The morning after, the servants were horrified to discover that the walls of the wedding bedchamber was covered in blood. No sign after the lindworm or his bride, his new wife was ever to be seen, except for the blood, of course. The lindworm wasn't seen for another few years, and the king and queen thought maybe he was satisfied. But of course, as we all know, monsters are never satisfied. So after a few years, when the king and queen was returning from a hunt, the lindworm came burrowing up from beneath the castle again, looked down upon his mother and father, and said to them, Ah, mother, father, it is time for you to find me a bride again. Because if you do not, I will 
devour your army. I will crush your castle. So you are defenseless against your enemies. The king and queen had no choice. This time, though, they didn't send letters far and wide. They demanded that one of their serfs, one of their people, give a daughter to marry the Lindworm. In return, of course, they would be, they and their whole family would be taken care of for the rest of their lives to live upon the land of the king for free. Now one old farmer offered up his only daughter, a very beautiful and clever young woman. And when she found out what her father had done, she became sad and afraid and worried. So sad and afraid, <clears throat> in fact, that she ran out into the forest crying. Eventually she collapsed during a big old wise oak tree crying. And while she was lying there, an old woman came, an old crone, none other than the one that had advised the young queen several years past. And the old crone, she said, Ah, oh, my young child, why are you sitting here crying? Now the farmer's daughter, she explained what the king and her father had agreed upon, that she had to marry a monster, the great beast Lindworm. But the old crone, she had a solution. She had advice to give. And she made the farmer's daughter do exactly as she told her. The farmer's daughter swore up and down that, of course, she would do that. And so it came to pass that it was to be another wedding in the great kingdom. And as usual, they put up a big divining screen down the throne room. The king would perform the ceremony himself. And, um, th but this time, there would be no wedding feast. Everybody still remember what happened last time. So, the wedding day came, but the farmer's daughter, she had a couple of demands if she was going to marry the Lindworm. And her demands were as follows. First of all, she required nine undershifts to wear to bed nine no more no less and they hurriedly provided her with nine undershifts and then she required two bathtubs brought up to her wedding chamber one filled with sweet milk and the other filled with lye very corrosive stuff, liquid. They hurriedly met her demands. And her final demand was that the biggest, strongest soldier in the king's army had to carry as many brooms as he was able and put him up in the wedding chamber. Her demands were met. The king shook his head and wondered what the, this was all about, but he had to give the Lindworm another bride, or else his country would be in ruins, open for all of it, his enemies to conquer and enslave and pillage. So the wedding came, the king performed the ceremony, and the farmer's daughter was brought up to the wedding chamber. And as she was in the wedding chamber, waiting for her groom, the Lindworm entered. And he came up to her and said, Ah, my young bride, please remove your undershift so I can see you. The farmer's daughter replied, 
Ah, oh, my big strong room. Please remove your scales so you are soft to the touch, and I will remove my undershirt. So the farmer's daughter took off one of her undershirts, and the lindworm shed his skin. But the lindworm saw she had even more clothes on, so he said yet again, Ah, my young bride, please remove your undershirt so I can look at you. Ah, my big, strong, dear husband. Please remove your scales so you are soft to the touch. So, the farmer's daughter removed one of her shifts, and the lindworm shed his skin again. And so it happened nine times. And when they have done that nine times, the lindworm had no scales left. All that was left of him was a long, muscled snake with no protection whatsoever. So the farmer's daughter, she grabbed one of the uh, brooms, dipped it in the corrosive lye, and started to whip the lindworm's body. She whipped so hard that eventually she broke the broom. She grabbed a new one, dipped it in the lye, and started to whip the lindworm. And she did that until she had broken every single broom the soldier had brought up to the wedding chamber. Finally, when she had whipped so long, all that was left of the lindworm was this big chunk of quivering, bloody meat, muscle, sinews, and flesh. She took her wedding gown wrapped up the remains of the lindworm in the wedding gown, dipped it in the sweet milk nine times, cradled it in her arms, and then went to bed. The morning after, the servants loitered outside the door of the wedding chamber, afraid to enter. Because the screams during last night was even more horrific than the previous wedding. They were afraid. Finally, the king and queen came, and they saw that the servants hadn't even, even dared to look inside. But they were brave enough, so they opened up the door, and what they saw horrified them. Green, sickly blood was splashed all over the walls. Scales and ripped skin lay strewn about the floor. Both bathtubs were empty. Piles and piles of broken brooms lay tossed around the room. But in the wedding bed, the farmer's daughter lied lay there sleeping, seemingly safe and unhurt. The king and queen carefully approached the bed, and they saw, much to their surprise, that the farmer's daughter was cradling what appeared to be a freshly born baby. She had broken the curse of the lindworm, and in return, the king and queen not only gained a daughter in the form of the farmer's daughter, but also they broke the curse upon their offspring. And as far as I know, they lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening.